Earth Shock is the only true silence in the deck, and sometimes that hurts against certain buff heavy decks. However, I don't always need silence, and the fact that Earth Shock also does 1 damage, which can be buffed by the spell damage from my Wrath of Air Totem, makes this double as a minor option for removal if I really don't need the silence. Using Earth Shock to kill a minion is fine, but whatever it kills had better be important. Lepernome is one of my favorite cards. I just can't help but smile at his attack cry. Give me a big hug! In terms of practicality, he's a 2-1 for 1 mana, making him a great play for the first turn, or when I just happen to have 1 mana left over. His death rattle means he's almost guaranteed to deal at least some damage to the enemy hero, even if he has to trade or is killed before he can attack. Ancestral Spirit is a really weird spell, whose primary job in this deck is to simply give me another guy who costs more than 2 mana. I really like using it on Sludge Belchers, Piloted Shredders, or anything else that has a good death rattle. I used to run two of these, but I kept finding that I didn't really need them both. I don't know how to explain it, but with two, it felt like I was just getting them too often. With one, it feels a lot better, like I get them as often as I need. I had to think about Crackle a lot. It was really hard to pick between Crackle and Lightning Bolt. But here's why I went with Crackle. Even though it has a massive random damage range, that still means there is a decent chance it can kill a minion with 4 health. I don't like having to depend on Crackle, killing anything bigger than that unless I absolutely have to. Or unless I have something small like a Leper Gnome, ready to trade just in case the RNG is against me. Reincarnate is the card that made this deck happen. It's such a weird card, you destroy a minion and then bring it back at full health. But at the same time, it's surprisingly versatile. I can use it to trigger death rattles, often to the surprise and horror of my opponent. I can use it to fully heal one of my minions. And I can even use it to remove buffs from an enemy minion, which is handy because I don't have much silence in my deck. It has more uses than you think. I don't think Flame Tongue Totem even needs explaining. It's just such a great card. I can hide it next to a taunt, forcing my opponent to fight through the damage. I can buff my totems with it to trade them for better things. It's an important card in most shaman decks, and it's important in mine. There's some interesting stuff about the Whirling Zapomatic. It almost acts as a de facto taunt, simply because my opponent is going to want to kill it as soon as possible. It is thwarted pretty hard by taunts itself, but even if I never get any advantage from the Wind Fury, 3-2 for 2 mana is perfectly fine. I don't always get to boost it with the Flame Tongue Totem, but those times when I can are devastating to my opponent. Hex is my answer to anything big and scary. It's not amazing removal compared to things like Assassinate, but it's cheap, so it has that going for it. Giving my opponent a free 0-1 frog with taunt is occasionally annoying, and yes, sometimes I have to eat a whole attack from a fairly large minion just to kill the frog. But since it's only 3 mana, by the time I get into the later game where I think about using it, I generally have enough mana left over to summon something else to help kill the frog next turn. I do not like Lightning Storm very much. It's just too expensive for the damage it does. And again, I really don't like Overload in general. That 2 Overload is really nasty, and usually it hoses me over on the following turn. But I needed the area damage to deal with situations where my opponent gets too much out too quickly. 
I only play with one because generally I spend enough time focusing my minions on board control anyway, so I just don't need it. It's not terribly often that I face an opponent who goes nuts with their minions and gets a lot out quickly. Mana Tide Totem is my only source of draw power in the deck, which can be kind of dangerous. But if I can get the totem up and stick it safely behind a taunt, it usually gets me enough cards to give me an advantage. Of course, it's guaranteed to give me one card anyway, and at the very least cost my opponent a spell or an attack to get rid of, so even if it dies right away, it's still a net plus. The Arcane Nullifier is a fairly new addition to the deck. I used to run Spectral Knights in its place, just because they fought well, but I realized how badly I needed the taunt. The Arcane Nullifier just happened to fit the bill, being large enough to be annoying, and at about the right mana cost I was looking for. It's just sheer coincidence that neither of them can be targeted by spells or hero abilities. As far as fighting goes, Baron Rivendare is good for killing frogs from my hex, and not much else. But his presence can be a major factor if I set him up behind a sludge belcher, or if I'm about to attack with a piloted shredder or a sky golem. Getting that extra minion can often make a huge difference. Plus, there are... other shenanigans. The Piloted Shredder's job is mostly to fight, but it's also very obnoxious to get rid of. Killing it just gives me another minion, and the combined stats of the both of them are really good for the mana costs most of the time. It fights reasonably well, so it's probably going to kill something from my opponent, and it'll then just replace itself with another minion. Sludge Belcher is an interesting card. For 5 mana, you get a 5-3 with Taunt, and that turns into a 1-2 with Taunt when it dies, making it pretty annoying to have to fight through, and respectively good at protecting my minions. I spent a lot of time pondering the real value of this card when it first came out. It's basically a Senjin shield master who summons a Goldshire footman after he dies. You're still paying the 5 mana you'd need to pay to summon them both individually, except you're only using one card to do so. This is one of my favorite targets for Ancestral Spirit, just because it gives me a lot more taunt. It creates this massive wall in just two cards, as long as it doesn't get silenced. What can I say about the Fire Elemental? It's big, and comes with some removal built in. Fire Elemental is pretty much the reason why I only need one Crackle. Just summoning the Fire Elemental gives me good removal, and some pretty threatening stats to follow it up. Piloted Sky Golem is my newest addition to the deck. I had to tentatively remove Staleg and Fugin to make room for it. But really, it was for the best. Staleg and Fugin were just too slow. I'd need to have both of them killed to get the real goodie, Thaddeus. Thaddeus is amazing and all, but getting him out was just a pain, much less getting out more than one. Besides, if I'm hit with just one Hex or Polymorph, the whole deal is off. Piloted Sky Golem just works better. It has big threatening stats that will likely kill whatever tries to fight it. It's a bit on the fragile side, but that's okay because when it dies, I'm getting another decent minion to replace it. More often than not, the amount of stats I'm getting out of that 6 mana is well worth it. Also, it's kind of funny when it drops a piloted shredder. Flavanus Windrunner was the first legendary I pulled from a pack. By sheer coincidence, it was the exact legendary I wanted for this deck. Taking control of an enemy minion or two can really help me get an upper hand over my opponent. It's not that unusual for me to trade minions to kill off my opponent's weaker minions, and then spend 8 mana to summon Slavanus and immediately reincarnate her, 
stealing the biggest minion I can from my opponent. Kel'Thuzad is just powerful. His job in this deck is to take a fairly even fight, or a slight lead, and turn it into a drastic lead. Kel'Thuzad is here to drop on a turn after I've traded some minions so he can bring them back. It's also nice that, on turn 10, I can make removing him a real pain by giving myself two. This deck mostly came together as I was playing my way through the Noxramus adventure. It was mostly put together just so I could play with the cards as they came out, and I had a lot of fun with it. I've never actually made a serious attempt at ladder with it. I came pretty close once, but because I don't play that often, by the end of the month I had only worked my way up to rank 13, I believe. I probably could have gone higher if I had really pushed towards it, but since I was only playing two or three ranked games per night, it was very slow to work my way up and never got very far. If you found this explanation of my deck useful or interesting in any way, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see me using it. And I'll see you next time. Bye!